Hey guys, so last week I made a video about how to sight read. In it, I talked a lot about needing to know your theory. Originally, I didn't want to make a theory video because there are actually plenty of other people on the internet who make tutorials and websites about theory. But I figured, hey, when I started talking about it so much last week, I kind of brought it upon my own head. I've decided to start a series on theory. Now, I'm not going to be uploading theory videos every single week, but I will be covering what I think are the basics of theory that you really need to know. Uh, in terms of more advanced tips, I recently realized that there are quite a number of you who are actually in music school. So if you are in music school and you do have a more advanced question, go ahead and ask me and I'll see what I can come up with. On with the first lesson. Again, like how I started in my sight reading video, rhythm. So we're gonna start with the most basic of music notation. That is what we call the whole note. You have to know what this is in order for anything else to make sense. All right, keep in mind whole, right? There we go. Next one you guys need to know is this one. Basically the whole note with a stem, a half note. Literally because it's half the value of the whole note. So the next one is the quarter note. Why is it called a quarter note? Because it is literally a quarter of the value of the whole note. Next one is the eighth note. Basically, it's a quarter note with a little flag, you see that? And why is it called an eighth note? Because it's literally an eighth of the value of the whole note. Pretty self-explanatory so far. So keeping in mind all of these little guys, the rhythmic value family tree will look something like this. Yeah, these are actually the American terms for these rhythmic values. The British ones are actually different. Semibrev, minimum, crotchet, and quaver. Yes. I think I got it right. Right before I shot this video, I actually went on Google just to make sure that I got the British terms right. When I looked up crotchet, apparently one of the definitions is a perverse notion. Get your head out of the gutter. Pretty much in the beginning, you really only need to know this. You can keep going actually indefinitely. Next one, you could probably guess. <laughs> That's a really terrible actually, whatever. A 16th note. Let's just say our whole note that the value equals one. Half means that it's half of the one. And then a quarter, and then an eighth, and then a sixteenth. Wow, lovely handwriting. You see how this works now? Half, quarter, eighth, sixteenth. Now, if you're not really understanding this and you're more of a visual person, here's a diagram that almost every teacher will teach their students. All right, so we're gonna start out with a very ugly circle like shown. We're gonna pretend like this is a pizza or a pie or whatever you wanna eat. Like right now, I actually really wanna eat a pie. We're gonna say that this whole value is a whole note. If we divide that in half, you literally get two halves of the whole, half notes. Divide it in half again, and then you get quarters, quarter note, right? Divide that again, evenly, you'll get eight pieces, eighths. Divide that again. Now you have 16 pieces, 16. So you see how that works? Alrighty, so next is meter. This is actually unbelievably easy. We're gonna take the most common one that almost everybody has seen. That's a time signature. You're gonna see this at the beginning of any piece you play. It's actually going to be kind of stuck like on the staff It'll look like that. Top number tells you how many beats there are in a bar. Now, what does the bottom number mean? I don't really know why no one really explained it to me like this before. You have to think of it not as four as in that's the value of the beat. The four is actually the denominator of the fraction. One fourth. Now how else do you say a fourth? A quarter. So what does this mean? That means that there are four quarter notes in a bar. You can put any number you want on the top and you can put any of these values because we already figured out what all of the fractions are. Let's pick a number, any number. I don't know, 15. That means there are what? 15 beats in a bar. Now what kind of beat is it, right? That's what the bottom number will tell you. Let's pick, I don't know, eight. So what does that mean? 
That means that there are 15 eighths, right? Because this comes out to be a, which means this kind of note. 15 eighths in a bar. Make sense? Alrighty, now for you more advanced people who know about compound meter. How do you think you would group this? I haven't beamed them yet, okay? So right now they look like quarter notes. Oh, by the way, you see this little flag? That's for a single eighth note. You see how these are beamed? Instead of having like two eighth notes with flags like that, it's actually easier to read it if you just beam it. That's what we call it. We call this a beam. It's just showing you how the eighth notes are grouped. Music is actually designed so that you can read it in groups rather than individual notes. Now back to this. There are 15 eighth notes, and how are you going to group them evenly? Think about 6 eight. There's only two ways of grouping it. Two groups of three or in three groups of two. Typically for 6 eight, we group it in two groups of three. It's kind of like 9 eight, we group it three groups of three. So what do you think about 15 eight? This is how you would probably see it. Suddenly, it's a lot easier to read, right? Because now you see five groups. It's really just counting to five, because you're actually grouping it. This is called compound meter. For you beginners, don't worry about compound meter right now. Uh, I'm actually just kind of talking to the more advanced people right now. Again, talking to the advanced people. Now you know how to group something like this. Let's say you get something like this. How do you group that? There's actually many different ways of grouping this. I'm just going to write in a couple for you guys. You can actually see the groupings already written into the music. But let's say you get there and you completely freak out and you can't remember what the groupings are so you kind of throw yourself off. You slash in the beats so you know where the beats lie. But they all look the same. How do you remember which one is a group of two and which one's a group of three? Very widely used shorthand. On top of every group of three, you put a little triangle. The way this is grouped is one, two, one, two, one, two, three. You'll just make life a lot easier on yourself when you see that instead of kind of like all these crazy time signatures. I actually saw this the most in like wind ensemble because wind ensemble rep tends to be really new. Also, I saw this a lot in my quintet music. Again, quintet music tends to be pretty new as well. One last thing. You guys have been hearing me actually talking about meter and time signature almost interchangeably. Actually, when I'm talking about meter, I'm actually talking about how the time signature feels. A 3-4 and a 4-4, four, four, they feel really different. 4-4 four, four feels really boxy. One, two, three, four. Whereas a 3-4 actually sounds kind of round. One, two, three, one. Right? And there you have it, rhythm and meter. Now granted, I haven't covered everything in this video. If you have another question or if you think I've left something out, go ahead and comment below. Find me on Facebook, Twitter. You can even Instagram me, I guess. I guess you could Instagram a picture of a really weird time signature and ask me about it. So I hope that was helpful for you guys. Let me know if you have any more questions and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye. Here we go. Once upon a time. Let's just say though, that you only knew the letters and you didn't know anything about grammar. You didn't know how words were put together, nothing. You just knew the letters, that's all you knew. It would probably sound something like this. Own ki you own a time -y. I need to get more paper. Mmm, okay, fine. I will go upstairs. Ugh. Ugh, okay. More paper!